Welcome to the Cisco Communities Expert Series webcast. Today we're going to talk about the introduction to the Web of Things, what it is, and what it's useful. My name is Hilda Artiaga, and I am a community manager of the Cisco community and the host of today's event. Before we start, there's something I would like to share with you regarding the community. Uh, the Cisco community is an online forum with over half a million members where you can actually get answers to your technical questions prior to opening cases with the TAC. You can answer to many questions, contribute, read documents, videos, and even blogs. So before we start, there are a couple of events that I, I would like to share with you and a couple of news that we are holding right now on the community. So on your screen, you will be able to see uh, all the events that we will be handling. So the first event that I would like to share with you, if you guys have any questions uh, regarding this topic after the event, uh, then we would like to invite you to the Ask the Expert Forum that we will be having place after this webcast. So let's say that if you have a question regarding the web of things after this event, let's imagine one hour before, well, I mean one hour after or maybe one day after, you think about something in I just mentioned. And then you can clarify that question on that forum. Or maybe we have just too many questions, you, are, you can clarify uh, these questions on this forum. So Ines will be answering all these questions till this Friday, October 19. You will be able to find the links to access to these events or to all this information that I'm just mentioning on the chat panel. Also, I would like to invite you uh, to another event. This is an ASCII experiment in, in the global community as well. We are uh, having the great opportunity to collaborate with a Cisco designated VIP. He's quite popular. Many of you should know him because uh, he belongs to Cisco Learning Network. His name is David Peñalos, and he will be helping all of you to answer all of your questions and uh, common uh, queries regarding the MPLS. He will be talking about the best practices on the configuration and troubleshooting. This event will be available till Friday, 26th of October, and all of you are able to participate. So on our next event, I would like to share with you also, for all of you who are Spanish speakers among this audience, you can have the opportunity to make all your questions about the configuration and troubleshooting of VPN services on FTD, which are firewall next generation. Uh, this includes any connects. So if any of you are having security issues or accessing issues uh, on your firewalls, then you are able to solve all of your questions this, till this Friday, 19 of October. This event is open only for customers and partners, and David and Roman will be helping you out to solve all of your questions. And also, we would like to invite you to become an event top contributor. So for all of you who are willing uh, to take a lot of uh, opportunities to help people and also receive something in regards. We have a lot of uh, different programs and we will recognize and we, we attribute everything that you are helping into this community. Uh, we have the Cisco designated VIPs and the Hall of Fame as well. And also we'd like to invite you to, to rate all the content that you find out on the community or rate uh, all the responses that you get. Sometimes someone help us to answer our questions, and it's very good just to tell them, thank you very much for helping me out. We have a helpful boat. It's very easy to give you, and you have to click on the on the tiny star that is there. Or if they give a solution, just give it a separate solution. Why is this helpful for? Well, uh, it helps us for people to keep helping us and to keep interacting with us, and it also helps us to identify quality content among the community. And well, uh, I would like to introduce you uh, right now to the person who's going to be with us today. Actually, we are very happy and very glad that she's with us. Uh, she's quite an experienced person. Uh, she's quite a great expert on this topic, so please take this opportunity to learn more about. Her name is Ines Robles. She is an Internet of Things consultant with over a decade of experience as an IT researcher as well. She is the co-chair of the Role WD, an IoT member directorate, a member of the routing directorate, and a member of the general area review at the IATF. Since the 2014, she has been in Finland at the Alto University to post a PhD related to IoT group management. In 2007, she started as a researcher on network topics at the Grid 6 Laboratory UTN FRM University in Mendoza, Argentina. She has experience with different protocols and programming, and well, uh, Ines, thank you very much for being with us today, and we, have, uh, we hope to learn a lot from you today. And well, also for all of you who would like to double check uh, this presentation, who would like to have everything more in detail, you can find the presentation on the community. Uh, we will place, 
we will place the, the link to access to these slides uh, so you can just have a look just right now as you saw on your screen. And also for, for all of you who would like to see uh, this presentation, we are going to record it and it's going to be available in the community on the upcoming dates. And before we start, next, I would like just to share with you how we are going to process here. I'm just completing this introduction and presentation. And for all of you who have questions, we would like to encourage you to make them on the Q&A panel. The Q&A panel is usually located on the right side or your screen of the event window. Uh, please place all your questions related to this topic uh, just right there. And if you have questions regarding logistics or you are having audio issues or anything else related to that, please place them on the chat. Uh, uh, the Q&A is also available on mobile phones, so you won't have any issues. And finally, for all of you, uh, WebEx has just an update. Uh, this is a new WebEx, so if you don't get lost just looking for the presentation, you will have available on your screen uh, right now at the middle uh, just a tiny menu, it's a drop-down menu with a narrow facing down. Uh, just please make sure you are clicking on the view in Tiago Santos. So that means you are looking at the presentation you, you, we are giving just toward this right now. And well, finally, what I would like to tell you is thank you very much, everybody, for being with us today. And now we are about to start, and I would like to thank all of you for your presence, and Ines in particular. So Ines, uh, welcome, and thank you so much. And please go ahead. OK, I will talk to you today about the Web of Things, what it is, and what it's useful. So the first thing I want to know, uh, next slide, please, is what do you think that is Web of Things uh, for you? So we have four options. So you can answer this poll right now. So the first option is uh, it's a web page showing connected things on it. The second option is the Web of Things is an architecture that enables interoperability across IoT platforms. The third option is is uh, Internet of Things at Network Layer, or is uh, the last option is a description of a HTML web page. So I would like to know what do you think that Web of Things is for you? So please answer in one minute. The menu for today, where we, what we are going to see is first we are going to give an introduction what is Internet of, Internet of Things. Then we are going to talk about Web of Things, we are going to give an introduction to that, the use cases, the building blocks of Web of Things. There are four main building, building blocks, like uh, the thing, the web thing description, the building play, the scripting API. Then we are going to talk about an entity that is client and server, client and server called Servient. Then we are going to mention two open sources. And then the conclusion, conclusion as the gateway. Uh, Internet of Things is a term that englobes a network where everything that can be connected will be connected to Internet. So people say that. Uh, that means that uh, the 6A are uh, uh, included in this definition like anything, anyone, anytime, any place, any service, any network. Whatever is in your imagination that you can connect to the Internet, it should be uh, possible to connect. So it means that we are going to connect heterogeneous devices, devices with constraints, right? Uh, devices with different kind of uh, power processing or devices for example, connected, powered with battery, yes? Um, Internet of Things means that you can connect as well these constraint devices. And why constraint? Why so few memory? Why so battery power? So in that way, the devices are cheap. So one goal of the Internet of Things means that you can connect things, common things that you use in your daily life to internet and to a cheap price, basically. So and this, uh, the characteristic of these devices as well is that they should be able to act autonomously. It means that they should be able to bootstrap itself, like start, start on and load uh, their own configuration uh, and the security. Um, so be ready to be used, like alone. So that is one feature of the Internet of Things devices. So and as well, we want to connect these Internet of Things devices in, in networks, in a, any type of network. So power, powerful networks and network with constraints. What means network with constraints? Networks with like um, 
low low bit rate, networks with high packet loads, with asymmetric link characteristics. So in this kind of environment, like everyone, everything that you can imagine, I should be able to connect things. So mainly that is the intent of things. Thank you. Uh, so it's just the next one. So it's um, the um, statistic says that for 2020, like in two years, we're going to have 50 billion of devices connected. So it's a kind of huge amount. Why? Why is this happening? Because it's nowadays it's, it's easily connect devices to internet. Uh, everything. If you see in the market, there is a lot of IoT already devices, for, for example, for a smart home, right? So in this context of this kind of Internet of Things devices in different kind of networks, came into an organization want to uh, make easy the interoperability. And in that way came the Web of Things. So what is the goal of the Web of Things? One of the goals of the Web of Things is not be a new standard, right? Why there are a lot of standards? Because uh, with this web, with this Internet of Things, appear new business models, and each business model use its own protocol. So, like we have different use cases. Not all of them. No, no one specific protocol is aligned to one use case. So, different use cases are going to use different protocols and standards. So one goal of the Web of Things is to be a glue with, within different organizations and protocols, right? So the Web of Things, the goal is to enable interoperability across IoT platforms and domains, right? So independent of the underlying implementation, independent of the protocol that you are using, independent of kind of a constrained device or constrained networks, yeah, the Web of Things means that you should be able to connect a device with other device uh, everywhere, every in every place of internet, right? And as, as well, give you a way to you can modulate and program IoT behavior, right? Like with the same description that we're going to see next next slides. So, what is the Web of Things? It's an architecture, yeah that enable Internet of Things devices to interact through web standards. Basically, that is the Web of Things. It's an architecture composed by the building blocks. So where is located the Web of Things in a common IoT protocol stack? So we are going to see, we see that the Internet is divided into different layers. So we see at the bottom the physical layers that can be any type of they, um, networks, for example, for example, the wireless sensor network that is called the 15.4. Then you have low to low energy or 5G. Yes, we have different kind of networks. Then for those networks that are constraints and you want to transmit the IPv6 packet, you use the syslow pan adaptation layer. The syslow pan what do what it does is like compress the IPv6 header and as well pro progress some kind of fragmentation and defragmentation mechanism, so you can transmit IPv6 packets without problem. And then you have the transport layer. You can have UDP or TCP. Then as well, the, you have uh, several kind of uh, security protocols, but one of them is Datagram Transport Layer Security, DTLS, uh, developed by the ITF. Then you have the application layer, and you, you have here the web transfer protocol, like for, for example, HTTP or CoAP, Coop is constrained application protocol. Coop is similar to HTTP, but oriented for constrained devices. And then up up here, uh, we have the Web of Things layer. So it's kind of at the top, and alongside with the IoT user application. So who developed the Web of Things? The Web of Things was developed by the, the worldwide web consortium W3C in two working groups. First, the uh, uh, Web of Things interest group that uh, you that in here you discuss about use cases and requirements, and um, you work with other industry alliance and standard developed organization, organizing black space events, the frameworks, do joint works. Eh? So when you have the use cases and the requirements for what you want to standardize, you go to the 
working group and say, okay, we have to standardize these. Um, the working group based on what the interest group um, has like mature, standardize those concepts, right? And do the w W3C recommendation. Okay, so how it works in the W3C, say, they say, okay, first, before define the standards that we want to, we have to define where it's going to be used, right? We have to define the use case or the main use case that we want to our architect to be used. So they define the common use case that we have maybe in our daily life, like for example, smart home. So in a smart home, um, we can have kind of different scenarios. For example, we have here in the first case, a control agent. So you, you can have an air conditioner and then you have a sensor, a control agent, a sensor when the sensor detects that it's like, for example, 30 degrees Celsius, send a command to the air conditioner to turn on. So you have here um, the, um, the electronic appliance and the control agent interaction. Then you have the, as well, the smart home gateway that you, for example, you are in with your smartphone, in the con you have a remote control in your smartphone and you want to send a command to the electron appliance over internet, you can uh, do it through a gateway, right? Uh, that is connected, that the gateway manage the devices in your smart home. Then as well, uh, we have we can have as well remote controllers, yeah, as well in between with the smart home. Uh, in the device, for example, uh, we have in our local network, we co communicate with the Wi-Fi, and we can have multiple network interfaces. So in well, in our local smart home, we communicate through Wi-Fi, wi and then we, if we have outside, we have outside our home, we can communicate with cellular networks. So it should be able to uh, adapt to different kind of protocols and architectures. As well, we can have the access through the cloud. Um, so we can have a proxies if we have a legacy device that is not connected directly to the internet. Uh, so these kind of proxies uh, make uh, do the intermediate um, between the device and the remote controller, in my, for example, in my smartphone. And then I can have as well a gateway in the middle. So the cloud is going to be an agent that mirrors the gateway and the devices that are managed by the gateway. And I can access through the remote control to that. So it's kind of very straightforward use cases, but kind of different architectures and communication mechanisms. Okay, we can have as well, uh, so they say, okay, we have the smart use cases, now a smart factory. And um, for example, in a smart factory, you have different kind of uh, protocols, for example, state communication, RS485 or EtherCAD. Um, and then you connect these to the cloud to control them. And as well, we have, we can uh, have services that they can access. Um, one person from outside, they want to monitor the, the machine, so the access to the cloud and the services, and they can interact with the, with the machine, right? So this is the use cases that they define, and as well, the connected car. So I have a gateway that is connected to this compo uh, the car component, to the CAN uh, uh, protocol then as well to the navigation system of the user. So the gateway send the information of the car to the cloud, right? So the cloud collects this data and make traffic patterns, and as well the gateway take information of the cloud and send how is the status of the traffic to the user. So in this kind of use cases, the web of things uh, base his architecture, and as well, not only this, but they say, okay, which are the functional requirements that we need? Uh, the functional requirements is flexibility that uh, I need, uh, I need, uh, should be flexible, should be able to be adaptable to any architecture protocol, yes. Should not be, should not be fixed to a specific thing. Compatible, yes, I should be compatible with legacy devices, with devices that cannot be accessed directly to the internet, so I need to a gateway. Yeah, compatible with all devices, with new, with the future, future standards that will be developed, right? 
and security and privacy. That is a very important thing in IoT environment because these kind of new business models are generating new security and privacy issues. So it's very important that when you do an architecture, it always includes security and privacy, right? Security uh, means that the system should perceive its integrity and functionality even when it's attacked. And privacy, the system should maintain the confidentiality of the person that is involved in the communication, right? Because the devices in general operate, operate autonomously, so they need a very strong security and privacy consideration. And as well, this security and privacy in, in IoT is a uh, work in progress. Yes, there are protocols, but still, since new business models are generating new security issues and new uh, security protocols are needed. Okay, so which are the conceptual architecture of the web of things building blocks? So is there are four important uh, building blocks here to say, okay, we, we want to glue uh, the different uh, 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 platforms and standards, so we are going to build four blocks for that. So first, the thing, so the four are the thing, the thing description, the building template, and the scripting API, right? The thing, what is the thing? You, you can see in the view that is the, the device. So next slide. So the thing is an abstraction can be an abstraction of a device or can be an abstraction of a virtual entity that you need to represent in an IoT application. Whatever you need to represent, right, and whatever you need to manipulate through the web, you can build it, build that as a thing. So it can be a device, a logical component of a device, local hardware component, yeah, or for example, uh, just a resource like a location. Right? So anything that you need for your application, you can build it as a thing. Yeah? That is one building block is very easy. So the thing, how you define a thing, which properties, like with, uh, with characteristics, with, with features, right? Which are that features? Well, you need an ID, like a URI, right? You need to identify the thing in the internet, so, or in the application layer, you need a URI. And the things are identified in that way nowadays, then you like, need a description, what that means for you, the name, uh, which uh, well, the support the person that is taking care of, the base, how you build the URI. Then the property, action, and events will, will be your interaction patterns. Then the link, the links to the resources of the thing, and the kind of security that you're implementing. Uh, Thank you. And then the next uh, next uh, building block, that is the main building block, is the thing description. That is the main building block of the web of things. Uh, so it's the entry point of, of a thing, right? The thing description is a structure that is composed by properties, action, and events. Uh, it's like the metadata of the thing. Metadata means the description of the data. So you describe your thing through Property, action, and event. So, uh, what what want to be the properties? Yeah, the properties we can say that are the resources. What is a resource? It's a atomic piece of information that you can manipulate. And what mean manipulate? You can read it and you can write in writing write it. For example, I can read the temperature. I can set the temperature that I want. This kind of properties of the device. If I have a uh, sensor, uh, temperature sensor. An action is like a pro the function that you can invoke. Mm -hmm. For example, um, a start on or uh, turn on, turn off. It's an action that you mandate to the device or to the things to do. And events are, for example, that, for example, when it's overheating, when the device is overheating, should alert the user. So this kind of events that are not synchronous. They are asynchronously happen, so you alert the user when something happens. This kind of event and action and properties are the things that um, are the features that describe a thing. And the good thing of this is that uh, the machines and the human can understand that uh, uh, that structure. We see an example. 
serialized in JSON. Um, so we see first the ID, the URI, then the name, the security is the basic, then the properties, here's one, status, and then the actions, toggle, um, and then the event, overheading. So this kind of structure has this, uh, this in description. Uh, as we see, by default, serialized in JSON, but uh, uh, I think future serialization are, are going to be as well accepted but for uh, future work. OK, uh, well, uh, one comment. I see here that from the pool, there is 57% that no answer. I, I would say that just, just take a risk and answer. Uh, it would be nice for, for me to, to see what should I explain or get into more detail. Uh, you don't lose anything just to just take the risk. Uh, so now that we have defined a theme description, we have to then indicate uh, how we include a specific protocol to that. I mean, I want to use in my communication with the device this specific protocol in this use case. So how can indicate that to the to the environment uh, through the Vini template? Uh, so the Vignette template is the next building block in this web of thing architecture. So uh, the Vignette template uh, enables a thing description to be adapted to a specific protocol. Yeah, uh, there is a lot of protocols. So indicating which protocol you, you are going to use, you use the this kind of uh, addition information to the thing description. So you have your basic thing description with action, property, and events. And now we are going to add information to the theme description that defines which protocol I want to use when I interact with a specific device in a specific use case. So this information is through protocol methods and options, media types, payload structure, and data types and value constraints. OK, the protocol methods and options, yeah, it's a set of methods that define the how is the, your message type and the semantic intention of the message? For example, in the REST architecture, in the REST style, I'm going to use get, put, post, delete, this kind of method. And if I use in publish, subscribe, I want to use publish, subscribe method, right? And then I, I could as well map to the web of the interaction verbs, read property, write property, read property, I want to use with a get, get, get the value when you want to write or modify, write the um, property, I can use a post post. Um, then if we want to subscribe, uh, subscribe to a specific property of the device, I, I want to use the subscribe event or subscribe property or unsubscribe, right? So I, I specify which kind of methods and option I want in my protocol. Then the media type, define the serialization that I want to use, this kind of serialization. Uh, the serialization is a method that you transform on a structure into a format that you can storage or you can transmit into the internet. Yeah. For example, the media tab and uh, here we have OCS plus Cboard. Cboard, a uh, consist binary object uh, representation, uh, is uh, using this kind of example is using Cboard as a serialization mechanism, and as well as OCS Open Connectivity Foundation rules that apply in this kind of use cases. All these media types should be registered by IANA, that is the organization that registers this kind of media types, that should be already approved to be used in the internet. That is the main thing. So I specify which kind of media type, JSON or Cboard or CNML, different media types that I can use. So then I have I want to specify which kind of payload structure I will send, I will interact with my devices. So for that, first I need to define a data schema. For example, here we see we have a payload structure that say, okay, my payload has level 50 at time 10. And then uh, but the other the other part say, okay, what means level and time for you? So for that or know what means that particular entity or word, I need a data schema. So my data schema is going to tell me how can I interpret interpret my payload, right? 
For example, in this data schema for JSON, I have uh, this kind of label, the type integer, integer, uh, integer, and I have a maximum and minimum value. And the same for time. Both are integer, but they have different kind of minimum and maximum. Well, no, they can kind of different maximum, actually. Um, so I specify which kind of value and um, range of value I want for my properties to be transmitted in the table. So I specify as well that. So we have, we can as well, like, well, the same, we can as well set our own values um, and, and range of value. We can set our, uh, our types. Well, on types, I mean, W3C say, okay, we have the basic types, integer, stream, but you could, if you specify following the rule, you can specify your own kind of types and your own value constraints as well. So it's up to the user and the implementation, how do you build that? So in that case, for example, we have the binning template. I say, I want to use, for example, LWN2M, that is a protocol for managed IoT devices, control devices, we send ML, send ML as a serialization process, over co-op, co-op is a control application protocol, like HTTP, the web transfer protocol, using DTLS, DTLS is for security. So I want this in the template, so I have my thin description with the properties, action, and events, and I add the IoT platform of uh, features that means are specific for my implementation, this kind of feature that I add for my in description, that is specific for my implementation, then I have the transfer protocol, in that case the co-op, then the media type, the, here I'm using, for example, SML, and then security, DTLS. So I add all this kind of information to my in description, then I use the specific protocol, for example, in that case, co-op, and I send this information uh, through the internet. So this kind of, so you adapt your thin description to the kind of set of protocol that you want to use. And you put all this information into the thin description. And in that way, you get interoperability because you can add whatever you want. I mean, following the rules, right? Whatever the protocols that you want to use. So in that way, uh, it's a glue between protocols. Okay, here came the second pooling question. And I would will, I will like to know what to Think about that, please. Uh, what is the thin description for you? Uh, first, is a description of co-op application protocol. Second option is a description of a HTML web page. Uh, third option, the thin description consists of semantic metadata for a thing based on its, its properties, actions, and events. Or the last one, the thin description consists of semantic metadata for a thing based only in each property, but not in each action or event. Uh, okay, now that we first we define the thin description, right? Then we define how how to adapt a protocol to a specific environment through the building template. Now we are going to see how can we manipulate a thin description, right? Uh, we can manipulate through a scripting API, right? A scripting API, next slide. Okay, it's the last building block that we are going to see now. Uh, the scripting API is a programming interface that represents the uh, Web of Things interface that you can run a script on a thing. So mainly the scripting API is going to able to you to first discover a thing, then uh, expose a thing means that you expose an object. You say, okay, here are my properties, action, and event. You expose a thing, and when you want to manipulate the thing, you consume a thing, right? Uh, of course, these kind of objects happening in a runtime environment, right? So you can access to the properties, action, and event and uh, through in this kind of runtime environment. Okay, so for example, if we have use cases for discover, we can discover things in our local network. We can discover things uh, what's in the runtime, or we can discover things through the internet. We can expose, uh, expose things 
means uh, generating the protocol binding in order to access the low level functionality. So when expose your thing, you're going to include as well your binding template feature, right? So in that way, you know, okay, I'm working with co-op now, I'm working with DTL and security, or oh, I'm serializing in JSON or Cbor, right? So expose a thing mean that as well. So you create an instance. You say, okay, I release, okay, I, I am a light work and I want to be on internet so you can contact me. And I, this is, are my properties, actions, and events. And this kind of protocol I speak. So I expose my, expose my thing uh, with that information. And then if I am a, I am a client and I want to, okay, this expose thing is, a, is in, a, in a server, a server thing, yeah? Server because I offer my things to, to, uh, to the internet. And when, to, when I want to consume a thing, right, I act in the, in the client point of view, right? I access to the thing. So, of course, consume a thing, meaning that I want to get the thing description and I want to parse it. And I want to generate the protocol binding, bindings that are a detail in the thing description that was generated using the binding template. So when I, I consume a thing, I can read the value of the property, I can set the value of the property, I can uh, invoke actions of observe events. Okay, we have now seen the thing, right? We have the, the thing that's the main abstract device, uh, or the main uh, thing that I want to use to internet. Then we have the scene description, that is a set of property, actions, and events that describe the thing. And this is kind of run and exposed in the iteration model. Then I have the scripting API where I can expose and consume a thing, depends on the application, what it needs from my device. And I can uh, communicate with other devices uh, that talk my, uh, my, my same protocol, like for example, the OCF one to one, right? So I have one thing. So these things can or consume a thing or expose a thing. But what happens when I have when I want a device that can do the both? I want a device that can consume a thing and I want a device that can expose a thing. So uh, for this functionality the W3C develop a Serbian architecture. Okay, the Serbian, um, so the Serbian is a software stack that has both roles, means that our client, and uh, there are servers that expose things and clients that consume things, right? This is kind of entity that was as well defined by W3C, the Serbian. So we can see that the Serbian have a, a scripting API, a runtime, and as well the security metadata that is aligned with the application script. And then we, we see that, for example, if the Serbian have kind of protocol bindings that talk with different kind of protocol, and then system API. This kind of system API is for legacy devices um, that not to talk the main protocols, no, but you can see, for example, local hardware and the proprietary communication, we can see those as things as well. But the Blue 3C is, uh, that is uh, the kind of legacy device specification is out of the scope of W 3C, but they are going to provide some examples in the future. Um, so the Serbian is a server and client device. So we, when we do about deployment, uh, what we can have, for example, the Serbian in a web browser. So uh, here we have the uh, Web of Things library that is load uh, the, that uh, load the scripting API with application script, and the security here is like optional because when you start a tab, uh, the tab is like is aligned with the policy of the origin. So if the origin is a uh, kind of type of security, the tab align with that, um, and the protocol bindings are the ones with the web browser. And the rest of the web browser API 
are treated as like legal, like assisting API of a service. Um, then we have deployment, uh, where can be this client, which is the role of the servant. So uh, the servant could be a client. In that case, the client consume a thing, consume the thing description. Uh, so the thing, like in that case, the light would expose the thing, expose his property, action, and even to the internet. And the browser, directly that is in the servant, uh, in, the, in the client role, directly uh, access to the uh, thing description of the device. Then we can have as well a, a servant running on the device itself, and we can have a constrained device, and we can have a not constrained device. So for a not constrained device, for example, we have in the first case, in the first case, we have a LED in a Raspberry Pi. So uh, this has a powerful CPU and a memory. So this uh, device acts like a web server. So it, has the web server functionality, so it can be directly connected to the internet, right? And my client, the browser, so the let expose the thing, and my browser consume the thing, right? And as well has pro proper local hardware that is like a system API proper, not like shared. Then we can have as well the constraint device uh, that has, for example, the protocol binding, the COA protocol, because the is not support is not powerful enough to support, for example, HTTP, but support co-op, which is kind of uh, similar to HTTP, but for constrained devices. And the firmware uh, offers the thing description. So this kind of minimal serving device exposes the thing description and is consumed by the browser. So we can have as well uh, the serving on a smartphone. Uh, in the smartphone is powerful, we, it can act as a gateway. Uh, so we have a legacy device like a light a light So the the smartphone has the the proper implementation to talk with this device and uh, expose the, the smartphone expose the thing on behalf of the legacy device and is consumed by the server in that case, right? The thing description acting to the browser environment. So through the smartphone and through the browser, the browser can be into in the smartphone or another computer or another device, right? But since the smartphone is powerful, it's connected to the internet and it's connected to the uh, device. And as well, next slide we can have a proper gateway. So in here we have a gateway that. Uh, so uh, several protocols, so can manage different kind of things, and the the gateway exposes the scene description on behalf of the devices, and in here as well is consumed by the web browser. Or we can have a cloud in the next slide. So we have like a middle entity here, the cloud. Uh, the cloud is the one that receives commands from the internet, from the browser and in internet. So the cloud here, the servant cloud, is a mirror of the servant gateway and the device that they manage. So the, the servant gateway uh, exposes the thin description of the devices that are managed by, by it and to the cloud servant and the cloud servant like a, a duplicate this in description and export this to the internet. And a web browser, located wherever, uh, can access to these uh, devices and manipulate the devices through the cloud. So if the, if the browser want to update or turn on the light bulb, it want to send a command to the second cloud, and the second cloud is going to send to the gateway, and the gateway is going to send the command to the light bulb and want to turn on. And then we can have, as well, well, directly the servant on the cloud when we have a legacy gateway that's not so powerful to support uh, this kind of robot chain architecture. So directly the servant cloud uh, act as, a, as a, uh, the exposing the thing description of the devices and through the gateway. And then, of course, we have some uh, 
a browser that can uh, access to the scene description of the devices and they can manipulate it in the way. And then we can we have the open source. So yes, we have uh, the open source. Um, this is the official in, in Node.js implementation, uh, for my understanding. The WCC web implementation. Okay, so you have kind of examples. Um, it is be it is updated like every day, so it's quite quite updated. Um, and you can take a look. It's nice. It has a very simple example to to follow and to understand how this is in description working. And then the the other open source is in Python. Next slide. That is from Mozilla. As well, the Python offer a web thing server. So when you create your thing, you put it into the server that they have in Python. So you expose the thing to the internet in a REST API. So that is the two open source that we present today. So here is the last polling question. Um, so I would like to know what do you think? What are the main building blocks in the web of things? So first option is the thing, the web of things in description, and the web of things scripting API. The second option is the thing and the web of things in description. The third option is the thing, web of things description, and the web of things in templates. Or the last option is the thing, the web of things description, the theme description, the web hosting binding template, and the web hosting scripting API. So please answer. Okay, so as conclusion, we we gave you uh, some takeaways. Uh, so which is the goal of the web hosting structural architecture initiative? Um, is to enable interoperability yeah, across IoT platforms, domains, protocols, right? They are not aimed to be another standard, but they aim to be like a glue between standards, right? And which are the main blocks of the web of things we, we saw today, like the thing, you know, the main device, the thing description, the set of property, actions, and events that describe a thing, then the binding, binding templates that mean that I adapt my thing description to a specific Set of, pro set of protocols that I want to use in my communication. Then the scripting API, they give me the programming interface that I can discover and think an object, about thing object. The scripting API gives me as well the possibility to expose my thing, right, with the properties, action, and events, and the protocols that I can use in my communication. Or I can consume a thing object so I can manipulate the theme description of the device that I want to interact with, yes? And then we saw as well that a servient is, is a abstract architecture, it's a kind of entity that performs in, in both servers and client roles. So the servient can expose a thing and as well can consume a thing. So that is the web of things. <laughs> from today. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you very much for sharing all your knowledge and everything related to the Web of Things and also to the IoT. Also, thank you very much for the audience who has just been here at this event. Uh, what we are going to do right now is well, we are going to read aloud some of the questions that you have uh, uh, proposed to, to Ines. I just like to share with you, like, if you have any questions related to this topic, or is there something you would like to know about the Web of Things, or even the IoT, in which Ines is such a great expert, please don't forget to place that question on the Q&A panel or on the chat. And also, for those of you among the audience who are not able to stay longer on this event, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, this session has been recorded, and the video will be available in the community on the upcoming dates. And also, we will be placing all the questions and all the information related to this event at the community. So, Ines, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read uh, aloud to you some of the questions from the audience. And I would like to, once again, encourage the audience just to provide your questions 
so the first question is, uh, first I'm going to read it, then I'm going to remove the mute so you can answer, is Web of Things work only with, five, with Python 3.5 plus, is there a chance for Python 2.7 to work out with Web Things? I think this implementation is with the, I mean, Web of Things you can implement in whatever language do you want, right? I mean, up to you program this kind of theme description interface. But I think the Python implementation available open source is in 3, in 3.5, 3.6. Uh, I, I, I'm not aware of any Python in 2.7. Maybe you should contact to the, uh, the coders, the guys there, and, and us. But I think they are working with the last Python, uh, last Python um, version. I mean, Web of Things is implemented in the, in the way that you want, right? In the language that you want, this kind of open source are in, in that. I don't know if I answer your question. I, I believe it does, Ines. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be sharing another one with you. Is uh, Why using HTTPS is an option for the Web of Things? Sorry, Ines? could you repeat the question? Sure, why using HTTPS, HTTPS is an option for the Web of Things? You can, you can, you can specify, uh, this, this W3C specifies some specific protocols, but you can specify any. I mean, you can put HTTPS if you want, but you have to specify, specify very good a pin and template as you wish. It's a security HTTP, right? I mean, you can use co-op, HTTP, HTTP2, uh, MQTT is the, the, the protocol that you specify in your printing template is the one they're going to use. It's up to the user and implementation how you configure that. Uh, Nesta, do, you, do I answer your question? Yes, Ines, uh, and I have another one. Uh, it says, in your opinion, what is the biggest challenge for the web of things nowadays? For me, it would be the security and privacy, because those aspects are changing constantly. Um, like I said, new business models are being generated. So, and depends of the use case is the issues that you're going to have, the security issues. So, and you have to be a, adapt. I mean, you said your security solutions should be able to adapt to any use case. And they are, since everything is kind of new still, um, is still work in progress, right? Um, that is mainly as well for IoT, that it applies for IoT. So for me, it's the, uh, the security. The security is the, the main challenge um, uh, because it's the main challenge for Internet of Things itself. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, uh, you specify in your being interface which protocol you want to use and which kind of security. But since uh, the security um, vulnerabilities are growing, as the new business model and use cases are appear, so that is the the challenge for me. Okay, uh, thank you, Ines. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you everyone for for being here. So now the final thing that I'm gonna do is just like I'm pretty much uh, gonna thank you once again, Ines, and for all of you who have further questions regarding the Web of Things, uh, this event will be available for the forum after this webcast till this Friday, October 9, 19. I will place that link on the chat so you can have access to this forum and you can uh, review all the all, all the questions or you can make further questions regarding this event. And also I would like to invite you all of you to have a look to our social media channels. There you can find more information about 40 events like this and then you can uh, review uh, upcoming activities as well. We are available on different social media channels from uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, the application and LinkedIn. Uh, to all of you, and also if you're looking for further IT training, we have different communities in different languages. So you can have uh, sessions like this in Spanish, in Portuguese, Chinese, Japanese, and even Russian. So there we have local events just for you if you speak a different language. And if you are looking for more and more, and you would like to learn more about the Cisco technology and the technology in general, then you can consult all the seminars that the Cisco Learning Network offers. They also arrange different materials and different presentations 
and as well different forums among their community. And finally, for all of you who have been assisting into this event, have a look to something special for you. We have a survey coming up after this event. It will come out in a pop-up window or maybe in your own presentation window if you run out towards uh, your browser, and you will have a 30% discount uh, with the code of CSC for all of you who fill out this survey and any Cisco press title that you wish. So please don't forget that one. And finally, please answer this survey and let us know how we are doing and let us know also what kind of topics you would like to see so we can arrange interesting events for you in the future. Uh, we really encourage you to do that and we really appreciate your feedback since it makes us to do better things for us. And well, what I would like to say now is uh, thank you very much to all the audience. Thank you everyone who has been here. And thank you, thank you very much Ines for being with us today. And we learn a lot from this greatest and new technology. My pleasure, thank you very much Hilda. Okay, thank you also very much for the team who has been helping out to develop this event. And we wish uh, you have a great day, a great evening, if you are in Europe and in Asia. And we shall meet next time. Thank you very much and see you.